Tip FM's Tip Today with Fran Curry. Welcome back to the final hour of Tip Today. Now, this July, an Adlerian Network of Ireland will uh, hold, the Adlerian Network of Ireland even will hold its 25th anniversary summer school in Clanmel. A number of the classes will deal with some uh, major issues. Let's find out about it now because I'm joined in the studio by Karen Molden. And Karen is from the Adlerian Committee Network. Good morning to you, Karen. Good morning, Fran. First of all, will you explain Adlerian to me? What what exactly is it all about? I will. Uh, firstly, thanks for having me on. You're very welcome. Um, to be here. Uh, Adlerian psychology is a psychology based on the work of the doctor and psychologist Alfred Adler. Alfred Adler was, he was around the time of Freud. Mm. Okay, he was based back in Vienna. He was the first president of the Vienna Psychoanalytical Society. And Freud asked him to join because he liked some of his ideas. But they had a bit of a falling out because... Um, well, Freud was prone to that, wasn't he? He was a bit, yes. <laughs> and if you didn't agree with him and his yes, theories... You as Mr. Of, Young found out as well. Precisely, yeah. precisely. Adler left before Young and he developed his own theories around how we as human beings operate in the world. So he was looking at people at, at, in a holistic way, right? We are not just, um, if you'll excuse the pun now, we're not just a penis. Mm. Um, there's more to us than yes. that. And yeah. there, we're not just driven by sexual desires. We're driven by lots of desires. We have lots of goals that we as humans set for ourselves. And also Adler looked at the fact that we're influenced by what is around us our environment, our society, and how we interact and how we negotiate our way through society. So he was looking at how maybe something as simple as where you were born into your family can set a pattern for a person as to how they then handle people in authority. So it could be that, you know, did you ever get stopped by a guard and you've done nothing wrong and you're kind of going, oh boy, what have I done? What have all I done? the time. Exactly, yes, yeah. yes, all the time. And so yeah. it's how we handle people in that perceived authority position. And some of that is how we were raised as children. Some of it is what we inherited. And some of it is from the society that we live in. Mm. You know, we're conditioned. You see a guard put his hand up to stop you and the first thing you do is check the speedometer. Right, you yes. know? <laughs> Whether you were going slow or not, that's the first thing we do. So how do you apply the teachings then of Adler to things like addictions and grief and loss and all of that. Okay, so one of the things I absolutely love about Adlerian psychology is that it's what we call a psychology of use, Mm -hmm. as in it's useful, right? Um, I like the idea that I can go and I can learn something and apply it to my life immediately. Right, it's not airy-fairy. No, it's very practical and if you ever work for counselling with an Adlerian uh, therapist, or psychologist, you will be told very quickly, you know, that there are going to be this many sessions and we're going to be working through the issues. And after that, then it's complete choice. Mm. So when you're looking at the area of addictions, right, what, what will be looked at is what is the purpose of the addiction? What are you gaining out of the addiction? Mm. Or what belief do you hold about yourself that this addiction fulfills for you? Mm. Right. And then once you know what that is, once you have that awareness of what drives your addiction, you're in a better position to actually clear the addiction and get rid Mm. of it. But is it not a case, though, Karen, that most people would be aware? For example, if I drank too much, it might be because I'm looking for the comfort, I'm looking for the escapism and because maybe the stress of my job or in my relationships or whatever. It could be, and it could be something as simple as that, or it could be the fact that as a child you felt less than. You had some sort of inferiority complex about yourself. Or it could be that you felt you were better than everybody else but couldn't achieve anything. Mm. So there are a thousand reasons why people do the things they do. It's knowing deep down, and it's not about just a surface level, oh, my job is stressful. It's more about what beliefs are you holding about yourself and what can you do about them. Right. What happens then when you apply this? Some, something like grief and loss, which we all have to deal with, sadly, at, at some point yeah. or other. How do you look at that from the Adlerian point, point of view then? Again, with grief and loss, because it's for most, of, well, for actually for all of us, it's going to be something that we do experience. Mm. It's a natural process in life. Okay. Yes. And then what happens is you experience a grief that is so unusual and we have such a level of suicide in this country at the moment that and the knock-on effects it's not just the immediate family it is the friends the extended family it is society in general the neighborhood where you live is affected if somebody dies unexpectedly and how you cope with that and what strategies you can learn to cope with that most people 
deal with the process of grief naturally. It's when you get stuck in the process that you need some help. So it could be that you need to know who are the people in your life that you can go to? Who are the people now in your life who are going to be helpful mm. that you can go yes, to? Yeah. Because you'll get an awful lot of tea and sympathy. But what you're actually looking for is empathy. Right, which is a totally different Completely thing. Completely different thing. Yeah. So if you were... A lot of people who come to our summer school are people who actually want to learn skills because they're looking at friends and family who are going through something really traumatic mm. and they want to know what can I do to help them. Yeah. So learning to sit with somebody in silence. I, I, I'm intrigued at one particular thing here oh, I see on the list, which, which is making friends with your inner, inner critic. critic. Ah. I would love to drown my inner critic. Well, you're coming along and rather than <laughs> drown him, just learn to befriend him. <laughs> so tell me, about, I mean, how do you do that? Because, I mean, I'm one of these people, if I open my mouth, I will re-examine it afterwards and mm. I'll say, I shouldn't have said that. Maybe I should have said that in a different way. Or was he or she offended? And I hope they didn't think I, you know, and it goes on. And it's a rambling thing that's going on all the time you know well maybe that's unique to you Fran maybe it's unique <laughs> to the rest of the world <laughs> no seriously mm. self reflection after mm. an event when we've had a conversation with somebody and we're going damn it I wish I'd said this or mm. oh, what I really should have said there was such mm. and such a thing right we all do that that's normal and that's actually quite healthy when we do this is it yeah. it is yeah because you're thinking to yourself well what could I have done differently mm. right an inner critic is somebody who says Oh, you made a right mess of that there. <laughs> you really did. You did a, oh, you did an awful yeah. job there. You know, yeah. that's an inner critic and that's the voice you need to silence. And, and what do you mean by it. making friends with that? You be, yeah. If you look at what is the positive intention behind that voice, what is the purpose of that voice? Because it isn't actually an alien voice. It's your own voice inside in your head. But We're you tell me, what ourselves. is the purpose of that? Because I could never figure that out. Why okay. are we our own worst enemy at times? <laughs> Because we haven't learned the skills to not be. Right. It's as simple as that. I always say that when children are born, they don't come with a user manual. Mm. I wish they did. My mm. TV came at one, so the DVD player, the child didn't. You know, it would have been very useful if yes. it had. Been. So we, we're not equipped with those skills. And we live in a society that is moving at a very fast pace. Mm. So it's very hard to keep up sometimes. And we judge, we end up judging ourselves quite a lot and quite harshly. So what we do is we look for, well... If your unconscious mind is putting this message up that you've really made a mess of something, okay? Mm. And I often describe our unconscious mind as your best friend, but seriously misguided. <laughs> you know, it's looking out for you, but it does it in weird and yeah. wonderful ways, right? right? So if we can find out what the purpose of that message is, you can achieve that message, but in a more positive way, mm. you know? So if you know that the purpose is that they want you to be next time you're in a meeting with your boss, don't be such a doormat and stand up for yourself. If you're getting the message, oh, you were such a doormat, oh my God, you lay down under him, oh my God, you, if that's what your inner critic is saying to you, then if you can learn to say, well, actually what my inner critic is saying is that I deserve respect. Mm. And that the next time it's okay for me to raise, my, to open my mouth and to say, excuse me, I'm raising this topic with you because I'm being treated disrespectfully. Mm. You know, yes. And that's how you befriend your inner critic. Right. And, uh, but it's not to take it to limit and say you're an idiot. And, like, well, we try you know, to refrain from that. We try to refrain yeah. from that, I would imagine. We are human. Um, so tell me, who, who are you looking for to come along to your, your workshops then, Karen, basically? The workshops are open to everybody. Mm. I know people have this conception, a misconception, that they're for therapists and psychologists yeah. only. Whereas in actual fact, they're for everybody. There, uh, there is, you have, there's no requirement that you need to attend except that you want to learn something. Right. That's all we ask people to turn up. And it's running from the 14th to the 17th, Thursday to Sunday. Mm -hmm. And do you have to attend every day? How, how does that work? Okay, so there's eight courses on offer. And six of those courses are four-day courses. So you would be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And two of them, including the inner critic, that's why you could come because it's a Saturday and Sunday friend. I'm just putting it out there. Um, there's two of them are two-day courses, the inner critic one and the spirit of encouragement. Right. They're both on the Saturday and Sunday. And we do that purposely because a lot of people can't take time off work if they want to come along. Um, the spirit of encouragement is quite similar to the inner critic in that it's approaching the same issue, but just from a different angle. Mm. It's more about self-encouragement and how you're going to learn how to motivate yourself right. through difficult times. Right? Okay. Um, and, and what about cost and stuff? How, how, does, okay. how does that work? Well, it's €210 Euros for the four days. Mm -hmm. And it's half that, of course, for the two days. All right. So when you come along in the morning, there's a plenary session, which is a free talk that's open to anybody to come along. And that's on the Thursday, Friday and Saturday morning. And they start at 9.30 until 10.30.
then you go to your course for up to lunchtime and you go back to your course in the afternoon. And we're finished then by 3.30 in the afternoon. So it's not a long day. Mm. I know a lot of people think that this is a very heavy and intense thing. It right. really isn't. And the one thing that people come back to summer school year in, like I've been going for 15 years, and trust me, I wouldn't go if I didn't have fun. Right, okay, you know? because that, that's a vital yeah. part of anything indeed. Yeah. And uh, if people want to book, how, how can they do okay, that? Okay, there's two ways to book. One, you can call into the office in the resource centre in Kickham Street and get a registration form, or you can download the registration form off www.adler.ie or you can go on to eventbrite.ie and look for 25th at Lyrian and you can book online. All oh, right, it's happening in Clonmel. Where Whereabouts, by the way? The Loretta School okay. in Clonmel. The L- Loretta, yeah. yeah, I know it well. Um, and, uh, I mean, you invite children, teens, adults? Yeah, that's everybody's the next thing. There. We have two other programmes that run. One is a teen programme specifically for children between the ages of 13 and 18. Generally, it's the younger teens who come to it. And then we also have a children's program. Mm. So for a teen or a child to attend, their parent must be attending as well. Mary Jo was on to us to say that I'm going around in circles since my brother died last mm. year. Very, very profound that, even the way she puts it there. It isn't is, it, yeah. Know? It's very difficult for people who are dealing with grief if they don't know how to actually move through it. You know, and Wes Wing is the the facilitator of that course. He approaches this topic in such a gentle way. Mm. He really does, and he he arms you with skills and knowledge yeah. on how to actually stop being stuck and how to move forward. And he's he's so kind. But obviously, that's not to block the grief in any no, way. No, it's never to block it. Yeah, and and a lot of people come and this when you block grief, you get stuck. Yeah, of that's course. actually yeah. how and it you has get all stuck. sorts of other damages yeah. as well. It yeah. does, of course, yeah. and it actually can affect your physical health in a profound way. Mm. It really can, like, and this is what, again why we like Adler because he was a mind and body or one system guy. Mm. You know, he was saying like that sometimes if you're coughing, and you've but a key, one of the questions he would ask is, has somebody died recently? Or not so recently, and you haven't dealt with it. Go on. Yeah, that it can it can sit on your chest, literally like a weight. Or as that listener said, you can end up walking around in circles. It's like you can't you plan what you're going to do for the day, but you just never seem to get it done. You know, it's because you're stuck. That's amazing, isn't it, mm-hmm. Karen? It was a pleasure and very interesting. Thanks, Thank thanks so very much. much, and uh, I hope you have a good time in uh, Clonmel. It's at the Loretto from 14th of July until the 17th, the 25th at Larian Summer School. Thanks, Karen. Thank it's you. It's 18 past 11 right now. Tip FM's Tip Today with Fran Curry.